Hi guys, it's Gav here from DancePlanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. I've been really looking forward to today's interview. I've got Richard North, Northy on to chat about darts. Thanks for joining me today, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Gav. Uh, been a long day, but we're getting there now. <laughs> what have you, what you been up to today? Oh, put a friend out, do a bit of work, you know, doing a bit of manual labouring. <laughs> in, in this heat, in this heat as well. Blimey. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was a struggle, but we got there. Oh, brilliant. Um, I've, got, I've got a number of questions that I want to ask you. First of all, I've got to ask the big one. Obviously, you qualified for the match play. Um, you got your draw against Simon Whitlock, but how on edge were you that night when William O'Connor got to the final and potentially uh, could have beaten MVG to, so you wouldn't have qualified for it? Yeah, um, yeah, it was very nerve-wracking. I was watching all the comments on Twitter, everyone saying about how worried I was. Yes, I was very <laughs> worried. I thought, oh, he's going to win it. I know he is, just my luck. Um, but then again, I kind of thought not many pe people beat Van Gerwen, but it was still nerve-wracking. William McConnell's a class player, and um, he was just a bit unlucky, to be fair. I'm fortunate enough for me that he didn't win it, so happy to be in the match player, I guess. Oh, fine. That's one of those ones, though, where you think, it's just my luck, he is going to win it, like you say, because Max Hopp won one earlier. You just never know in that sort of format, do you? No, exactly. Like everyone who plays in it is good enough to beat anyone. So you're always nervous, and especially when you know if he wins it, you're out of a major TV tournament. So yeah, I was very nervous. Oh, that's fantastic that you got through. So what about your draw with Simon Whitlock? Pleased with it? Yeah, definitely. I know Simon. We've we've always thrown against each other quite a bit since I moved down this way. Uh, so yeah, it could have been a lot worse, but could have been better as well. But um, I'm happy with it confident and um, we'll see how we go really and if you was to get through that one you've got a potential line up with James Wade in round two but I know you can never look past the first round but do a lot of you players look beyond it some say they do some say they never look at the draw is that true <clears throat> um, I think you always look at a draw it's impossible not to look um, when I my personal opinion when people say they don't look I think that's rubbish I think everyone looks you, you're not looking forward to do it but like that you're expecting them to get there, but you always look, you always know you're going to play next round. That's like doing your homework a little bit as well, isn't it? You know, knowing who you potentially could play, what your record is against, all that sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Like, I, I knew that, you know, James Wade might not win his first game, I might not win my first game, but if we play each other, I know I've got 100% record against him. Um, is he a class player? Yes. Is he playing the game of his darts of his life at the moment? Yes. But, you know, I'm going to go in there with confidence if... I get free Whitlock. So. Exactly. As I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a tasty draw, I think. Um, how much? How much does getting to like the match play help the rest of your season going forward? How how big a plus is it? Well, it gives you confidence, doesn't it? It's the second biggest TV major we got on the calendar. Yeah. Um, it being in that's just going to give me confidence, and it helps towards the rankings where I'm trying to push for the top 32 by the end of the year. Um, I'm not going to be far off it if I have a run or two in the world and the match play. Um, I think I could be there, so it helps massively for sort of financial and confidence, I guess. So. Yeah, because it's all about confidence, isn't it? You know, it's if you do get on a, I suppose like you say, you've been in a dip before. We had a quick chat before we started this interview, and that if if you not at the top of your game, it's it's even more of a struggle before you get on on the TV, isn't it? Yeah, like I said, I'm an operation and. Um, my form dipped, I was losing a lot of six fives because I had no confidence, I was in a bit of pain and uh, when that pain did go away, my confidence was not four to six fives I lost I didn't feel like I could finish a game off Yeah. that really stepped me back for a little bit and that's why I only just got into the match play because before that I was quite in there and yeah, that's not my confidence, but we're back, got the confidence back again now, so really looking forward to the match. Great, op great opportunity as well for you. So what are your goals for uh, 2018 then, Richard, beyond the match play? Uh, I'd love to qualify for the Grand Slam of Darts. I've watched it since it started. Yeah. Um, and I like the fact it's got the BDO players in. That's so, my favourite uh, tournament. I love it. That is probably my favourite. I've always said it. I like the mix. Yeah, I mean, it's one of my favourite ones, and... Um, to get in, and that's one of my big goals. I want to qualify for the Grand Slam. It's the hardest one to qualify for because you have to either win something or get through the qualifier. Yeah. Uh, you, you never know how many spots are up 
available. Uh, so yeah, the Grand Slam and just qualify for the other majors. Really, I'm in line to do that. But, you know, uh, the work. Well, I'm in. I've qualified for the Worlds already. I think. Someone yeah. Said. Um, That's a huge was, confidence boost as early as this as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but again, like I said, my aim is to try to get in the top 32, so hopefully I'll be seeded. It's yep. a little bit of a big ask, but I, I think I can do it. Uh, I want, I'm in line to qualify for the first time as well at the uh, European Championship Finals. Right. Yeah, brilliant. So, so that'll be good. I'm only just in there at the moment, but I'm in uh, Hildesheim in a month or so, whenever it starts. I can't remember when it starts. So um, that should push me up a bit more. Um, and yeah, like I said, the, my main goal is really just the top 32 by the end of the year. That's what I said. That's what I said at the start. Yeah, what I wanted to do. So how difficult yeah. are how difficult now you mentioned how difficult are all these European tours and different things of all the travelling and going from here to there and having to come back because a lot of people say the travelling in itself can be a killer. Um, you know, a lot of us, I don't, you know, get to see it. I've not got the PDC stream or, or you know, how difficult is it, um, Richard? Yeah, it is. Like, for me, I'm a family man as well. And obviously, you can't be taking your wife and your kid halfway around the country no. like, all the time. So, uh, yeah, that part is hard for me. Like, the travelling, there's so much traveling. You've got to go up like a day or two before. And you've got to get trains, planes, taxis. Uh, that's all for you in front of that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's hard. And obviously the standard on there is brilliant and the crowds are massive. So, yeah. And it's good, obviously, for um, for things like it's good experience. The Euro Tour has got me used to playing on a big stage. So yeah, that's but... why I'm lo feeling confident for the match play. Well, it's, like you say, there's loads and loads of fans going to them. It's just getting bigger. And, and, and it's good like to play in all these different venues as well, isn't it? Um, you know, X amount of years ago, they, they didn't have all these huge tournaments. So it was easier for the guys at the top um, because they knew that some of the lower, not well, lower ranked players weren't able to get that experience, but it, it's a plus, it's a win win for you guys, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think the Euro Tour has proven brilliant. It's, uh, people's standard are going up higher from it, and now from the Euro Tour, they're performing on the world stage and like stuff like the match playing up because of the Euro Tour. If they didn't have the Euro Tour, the standard wouldn't be getting what it is now. Of no, course. it was great. It was like great to see Max Hopp win it and that because obviously, you know, when he won it, uh, it's it's given him so much confidence and that because he's such a young lad. He had to, he's had so much weight put on his shoulders, obviously for Germany and that. So it, it gives them opportunities to kickstart their career again as well, doesn't it? You know, with them. Yeah, definitely. I watched Max at the start of the year and the end of last year. He was struggling on the pro tour. He, he didn't look like winning a game, um, but. Yeah, like you said, it only takes one tournament to give you that confidence that you need. Now he's playing some phenomenal darts. Phenomenal darts, darts so. yeah. So what about... Watch him playing the World Series, so he hit some good doubles <laughs> in that. Yeah. So what about, what about practice then? Do you practice a lot? So you've got practice routines? Um, or, you know, do you just do a couple of hours a day? Yeah, no, I, uh, I try to get in at least four hours a day. Um, and I just, to start off with, for about 15 minutes, I literally just throw at anything really on the board, not really anything, just get my arm warmed up. Yeah. Uh, and then I'd normally go into like the one two one in nine darts, hundred twenty one oh, right. in nine darts, and white wept one thirty. Yeah. That's uh, and then start going around the board on doubles and then just pick some favourite checkouts that I like and don't stop to eat them. Do you use any of these like practice um things that you put on the board or anything? I hear a lot of people speak about all the treble trainers and all that sort of stuff. Do you use those? No, my stepson, um I'm not sure what they call. They used to be these little circle things. Oh, and, I've uh, seen them. Are they the Bristow ones? I'm not too sure. They might be like they're, they're like. There's, I think there's about six of them. They're all different sizes. You yeah. Put them where you want on the board. Yeah. I think I have seen I have, them. Yeah, I had a little go on that um, once, but no. I don't, for me, I don't like using all that stuff really because you can't. I know they say you should practice with other stuff, but for me, I just want a dartboard and just do what I know really. Yeah. I uh, have used um, the, what they called, the um, smaller trebles and doubles. Yeah, um, used them. If it, yeah, I've used that, but it gets stressful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I say, I suppose for some people it is all just as long as you can, you know, big checkouts are everything. Now, if you can't hit a big checkout, you're in all sorts of mud. You've got to be able to take out all the one five sixes and one two ones and that when you get an opportunity um, nowadays, isn't you? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, that's that's what it's all about. Big checkouts and how he's scoring, obviously. Um, but yeah, I've not been one to uh, try other stuff really. I just stick to what I know for me. Yeah. So who are you friendly with on the tour then? Who are your best mates? Oh, well, I've got a lot to be fair. I'm <laughs> quite a talker. I can so, imagine um, you. You're, you seem very much like me. That's why I was buzzing when you was going to come on the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I get on with most. Hardly anyone I don't get on with, but I'd say the main people I really get on with. I get on with Robert Thornton really good. Yeah. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, Chris Doby, we get on really well. My um, missus, my missus like the Scottish guys because she's from, um, she's from just outside Edinburgh, so she's always supporting um, Thornton and Hendo and, and all the guys, all the Scottish lads. Yeah. Henderson. So yeah, I get on with Henderson really well. I played Henderson. Way before I was a professional in the BDA World Championship qualifiers, um, I think I was about 16, and uh, he, oh, uh, me. he beat me. Uh, I had three darts to beat him, actually. Did you? Uh, yeah, at tops, and he qualified that year as well. So um, uh, I, I've known Henderson for quite a long time, actually, and he was really nice when I got on the tour. Uh, but I get on with Chizzy a lot. We, we tend to practice a lot uh, before the games on the pro tour together. Yeah, I'm hoping that he come good again soon, up to his best, you know. It's not, um, you know, it, there's something missing from his game, from where he's been in the last sort of year or two. Is he starting to sort of improve on that again now? Yeah, definitely. Um, when we're practising on the pro tour, he's... Insane, isn't he? Yeah, people reckon he's insane in practice, isn't he? Yeah, the things he'll do, like, you want 126, he'll go, like, bullseye, double 13, bullseye, and stuff like that. He's, he is, uh, yeah, it's amazing what he can do on a dartboard, to be honest. Yeah. Um, that's more like practicing room because it ups my game. Yeah, definitely. So what about, um, what advice would you give to youngsters that are now starting in the game, that want to try, obviously, and get in the PDC, um, have to go through Q school and that? Any any tips for them? Yeah, definitely. Um, don't go there worrying too much. Just go there and enjoy it for the first time. I think it's experience the first time. If you go there and just relax, you know, you've got a bigger chance. Um, the first time, just go there to find out what it's about. It took me a few try tries to get through. And you just got to believe in yourself, because I never used to believe in myself when I was a bit younger. Did it take somebody um, else, Richard, um, to actually give you that confidence to start believing in yourself? Or was it just something that came naturally to you in the end, or knowing that you had to? No, it was my wife. Was it? Uh, my wife is my biggest critic and she's my biggest supporter. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be a professional dart player. That's a million percent. Um, really? You know, I never used to take it as serious as I should have. Um, I'd like to enjoy myself too much. And um, she said, you're just wasting your talent, basically, and give me a kick up the bum. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't for my wife, I'd be nowhere near The rest is history, now, so. and there you are, like number 46 or whatever in the world, looking to break into the top 32. That's all you need, yeah, is just cool. somebody behind you, just to believe in you. And what about sponsorship? And, you know, is that a real big factor for some of these guys that, you know, do they really need it? Um, yeah, well, for me, um, again, like I said, my wife was the biggest thing that got, got me where I am. But if it wasn't for Modus, uh, Jason Tane, I wouldn't be around because I wouldn't have been able to afford it yeah. uh, at the time. It's uh, with all the travel and all the spending money that you need when you go away and all that. It's um, it, you can't do it on your own unless you've got a lot of money in the first place. No, nah, it's and, right. It must cost thousands every single year. Um, it's it's yeah, it's just getting the sponsor in it, and hopefully some of this talent, like um, Andrew Gilden yesterday was telling me, that some of these guys out there that you see on the floor are hitting ridiculous averages. Um, and just will never ever get the opportunity. They're a bit old, they've got a family already, um, you know, working long shifts and just won't ever get that opportunity. So go undiscovered. Yeah, that's that's the horrible thing about it. Um you can have you could be one you could be the best art player out there and you haven't got a chance to prove it. because uh, it's not cheap to go to Q school and it's not cheap to do the BDO circuit either. So um it's really hard. Uh, the only way you get noticed now, well, to be honest... Is it winning is something big it. locally? Uh, pardon? Is it winning some sort of uh, tournaments locally or, or you know, to, on a regular basis that you might get picked up at? 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's how I got picked up with Modus. Um, I was playing the likes of Andy Jenkins, Simon Whitlock, and I was winning tournaments they were going to. Right. And they went, their management team said, look, this kiddie can play. Um, I think she's bothered, man. And um, I got into one of their exhibitions, and Michael Van Gerwen said to my manager, we should sponsor him, because I almost beat Michael at an exhibition. Wow. So, Incredible. Uh, I took him 4-3. It was it's... a good game. Oh, fantastic. Sounds amazing. Uh, just before we go, can I just ask you some quick fire questions? Yeah, go for it. Let's man. have a go. What's your favourite movie? Oh, you, you're asking a movie freak, I am. Uh, but one of my favourites, uh, probably an old film called Biker Boys. Biker Boys? I don't even know if I've seen that. It's a good one. I think it was about 2000, 2001. It's a... And um, obviously Shawshank Redemption. I've got oh, I love Shawshank well, Redemption. Though. That is unbelievable. I think I like The Usual Suspects as well. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and uh, for a storyline, I loved um, Laura Biden Citizen. Just not the storyline, oh. just uh, how it um, panned out. I thought it was amazing. Uh, how he was going underneath the tunnel each night and he was there and the lady on the phone got her head blew up. It was, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Hell of a twist well, at the me, end. Yeah, like for me, because normally you can predict the end of films and you never knew he was doing it all on his own. It no. It was incredible. It was just, yeah, that was one film you, you just couldn't predict. Could you? At the end, I was like, what? He's, he's, he's like, his garage was across the road or whatever, wasn't it? It was amazing. Yeah, they said, like, he's stuck, he's still <laughs> into prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. I loved it. Yeah. Um, what about your favourite food? Favourite food? Uh, it's not healthy, but it's got to be... For a takeaway, McDonald's and my wife's roast dinner. Oh, I love it. Yeah, lovely. Uh, what about your favourite sport away from darts? Snooker, absolutely love it. Who's your favourite player in that? Judd Trump. Yeah, he's good, isn't he? Quite, he's, he's not been yeah. world champ yet, though, has he? It's only a matter of time. He's got to, isn't he? I've heard, I've heard people say, no, he's not going to do it. He's not consistent enough. But when you've got that talent, you don't need to be consistent. He's just... Phenomenal he's, he's got it. Yeah, I just hope he ain't going to be another Jimmy White. Obviously, I was a huge Jimmy White fan growing up. I just hope he ain't going to be yeah. another Jimmy White because, uh, uh, you know, he got about seven world finals, didn't he? Um, let's yeah. hope that Judd does it. I don't think Judge will, uh, Judd will be a Jimmy White because Jimmy White had a lot of problems off the table. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know Judd's situation, but I don't think he has, so I think he'd be a different kind of player. I bet he don't smoke and drink quite as much as what Jimmy White did. <laughs> Exactly, I don't think it does either. So. <laughs> and last but not least, what's your favourite sort of music? Um, I love the 80s. Uh, 80s love. That's oh, a bit, I love um, 80s. Uh, yeah, um, 80s is a brilliant era. Uh, I don't think you'll beat it. And I love Ed Sheeran. So. Yeah, oh, I love the 80s as well. My wife go mad every day when I'm out here. Um, in, in the office now. I've always got absolute 80s on or something 80s and all my playlists are 80s and Alexa's set up yeah. to 80s and it's even worse now because my daughter who's 14, I'm a little boy though, yeah. but my daughter's going to be 14, she loved the 80s and drives her absolutely mad. Um, you can't beat yeah, it, it's brilliant. It's yeah, party it's, it's time, like, isn't it? Yeah, and even the early 90s, you know, like a bit of Ace of Bass and all that. There's yeah. just some great music out there back then. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Well, listen, Richard, I wish you all the luck um, for the match play. Um, good luck against Simon Whitlock. Thank you so much for coming on Darts Planet TV. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, pal. It's been a pleasure. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, and for all you guys that have watched the video today, I hope that you've enjoyed my interview with Norfie. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn your notifications on, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye. Bye.